The adapter design pattern is a structural pattern that allows incompatible interfaces to work together by introducing an adapter class that acts as a bridge. It is often used when you have a class with an interface that does not match the one you need. The adapter design pattern wraps the existing interface into a new interface that the client expects. Here is an image of a car to rail adapter that adapts the car to function on the rail tracks. Imagine that you're creating a stock market monitoring app. The app downloads the stock data from multiple sources in XML format and then displays nice looking charts and diagrams for the user. At some point, you decide to improve the app by integrating a smart third party analytics library. But there's a catch. The analytics library only works with JSON format. You can't use the analytics library as is because it expects the data in a format that's incompatible with your app, which uses XML. You could change the library to work with XML. However, this might break some existing code that relies on the library. And worse, you might not have access to the library source code in the first place, making this approach impossible. This is a special object that converts the interface of one object so that another object can understand it. Thus, the solution is to use XML to JSON adapters. We have an adapter that is able to process the XML that is used in the core application and adapt it into a format that is compatible with the third-party analytics library that uses JSON format. Here's a diagram that shows the XML to JSON adapter in action. We have the client, which is the original form of the request in XML, the adapter that converts the request to be compatible with the final state, which is the JSON format. In our previous diagram, we can see that the core application uses XML and is the client that's trying to get the service from the adaptee, which is the JSON analytics library. Using the adapter pattern concept, we're able to integrate this third-party JSON analytics library. An adapter wraps one of the objects to hide the complexity of the conversion happening behind the scenes. The wrapped object is not even aware of the adapter. For example, you could wrap an object that operates in meters and kilometers with an adapter that converts all of the data to imperial units such as feet and miles. Adapters can not only convert data into various formats, but can also help objects with different interfaces collaborate together. How does an adapter help different interfaces collaborate? Well, step one is the adapter gets an interface compatible with one of the existing objects. Step two is using this interface in which the existing object can safely call the adapter's methods. Upon receiving a call, the adapter passes the request to the second object, but in a format and order that the second object expects. So if we go back to this example, the client is using the adapter interface to convert the XML to JSON format, which is compatible with the external library. Going back to our stock market app, to solve the dilemma of incompatible formats, you can create XML to JSON adapters for every class of the analytics library that your code works with directly. Then you adjust your code to communicate with the library only using these adapters. When an adapter receives a call, it translates the incoming XML data into JSON structure and passes the call to the appropriate methods of the wrapped analytics object. Let's take a look at a real world analogy of traveling abroad. When you travel from the US to Europe for the first time, you may get a surprise when trying to charge your laptop. The power plug and socket standards are different in different countries. That's why your US plug won't fit a German socket. The problem can be solved using a power plug adapter that has the American style socket and the European style plug. Now let's look at an object adapter. This implementation uses the object composition principle. The adapter implements the interface of one object and wraps the other one. The client is a class that contains the existing business logic of the program. The client interface describes a protocol that other classes must follow to be able to collaborate with the client code. The service is some useful class, usually a third party or legacy service because it has an incompatible interface. The adapter is a class that's able to work with both the client and the service. It implements the client interface while wrapping the service object. The adapter receives calls from the client via the client interface and translates them into calls to the wrapped service object in a format that it can understand. 
The client code doesn't get coupled to the concrete adapter class as long as it works with the adapter via the client interface. Thanks to this, you can introduce new types of adapters into the program without breaking the existing client code. This can be useful when the interface of the service class gets changed or replaced. You can just create a new adapter class without changing the client code at all. Now let's look at a specific example in which the adapter pattern is used based on the classic conflict between square pegs and round holes. We want to create an adapter that wraps the square peg to make it compatible with the round hole interface. Notice that the round hole class is created with a specific radius via the constructor, and the fits method checks if a round peg can fit inside the hole by comparing their radii. If the peg's radius is smaller than or equal to the hole's radius, the peg fits. A round peg object is created with a specific radius via the constructor, and the getRadius method returns the radius of the peg. Notice that the round hole and round peg classes have compatible interfaces since they both deal with radii. However, there's an incompatible class, the square peg. Instead of a radius, it is created with a width via the constructor. The getWidth method returns the width of the square peg. This adapter class makes square peg compatible with round hole. It extends the round peg class, which means it can act like a round peg. It adapts its getWidth method to make it compatible with round peg's getRadius. The getRadius method in the adapter converts the square peg's width to an equivalent radius using the formula of peg.getWidth times square root 2 over 2, which represents the radius of the smallest circle that can encompass the square peg. So what are some use cases of the adapter pattern? One use case is to use the adapter class when you want to use some existing class, but its interface isn't compatible with the rest of your code. The adapter pattern lets you create a middle layer class that serves as a translator between your code and a legacy class, a third party class, or any other class with a weird interface. The second use case is to use the pattern when you want to reuse several existing subclasses that lack some common functionality that can't be added to the superclass. You could extend each subclass and put the missing functionality into new child classes. However, you'll need to duplicate the code across all of the new classes, which smells really bad. The much more elegant solution would be to put the missing functionality into an adapter class. Then you could wrap objects with missing features inside the adapter, gaining needed features dynamically. For this to work, the target classes must have a common interface, and the adapter's field should follow that interface. This approach looks very similar to the decorator pattern.